while you're meditating, let the Dharma talk stay in the background. You don't have to focus your attention here. The whole point of being here is to focus your attention on the breath. Because the breath gives the mind a good place, good safe place to stay here in the present moment. Otherwise, the mind tends to go running out in the road all the time, gets run over. As long as it's out looking for happiness and things outside, it's like going out in the road and then complaining because the cars are running you over. Of course they're going to run you over. That's the nature of a road. Cars come and go. And if you put yourself in their way, they're going to run over you. What you're doing as you're meditating is that you're taking yourself out of the road. In other words, you reflect on the, the happiness that comes from things in the world. And the Buddha never denies that there is some happiness there. In fact, he devotes huge sections of the canon to discussing happiness in the world. Happiness in the terms of social harmony, happiness in terms of a family where people can trust each other, where people hold by the precepts, happiness in terms of having enough to eat and not being in debt. These are forms of happiness, but they're never really enough. The mind has this craving. For more. And it's learning how to use that craving in an intelligent way. That's what the practice is all about. If the mind were totally satisfied with the happiness you get out in the world, it would be a very small, very small mind, a very small heart. But there's a hunger inside for something more. And the problem is that we tend to try to add more things in terms of worldly happiness in order to fill up that hunger, and it just doesn't work. Think about the happiness you had last week over some sensual pleasure. Where is it now? Well, it's gone, and it's just a little bit of a trace of a memory. In fact, most of those memories are gone, too. And there's no guarantee that that trace of a memory is going to be a happy memory. Sometimes thinking about the pleasures you've had in the past that you don't have now, that can get very upsetting. And looking for happiness in terms of outside pleasures creates bad habits in the mind. It's like eating one potato chip that makes you hungry for another potato chip, and then more and more and more, and that's not good for you. So that's the bad side of the hunger. The good side of the hunger is that we realize that there, there must be something more, there must be something better than this. This is what encourages us, encourages us to look inside. For the spot where we're bringing the mind to stay with the breath, coming in and going out like this right now. It's not only a way of getting out of the road, you find that there's real nourishment that comes from being here. That's the nature of the mind. When the mind is allowed to be still, happiness arises. As the Buddha once said, there is no happiness aside from peace. And so we find that when we bring the mind to stillness, you don't have to do much of anything else, just the stillness of the mind, as it's allowed to develop, as it's allowed to take root inside and then to grow. It really does provide a sense of nourishment, a sense of well-being. It energizes you. So stay focused on the breath. Stay focused on this point in the present moment where your intention is to stay with the breath. The breath is present. And there's also the quality of ease, quality of well-being. And allow the mind to, to feed on that. As long as the mind needs to feed on things, give it something good to feed on. The sense of well-being, the sense of fullness that comes as you allow the breath energy to flow in the different parts of the body. When you think of the breath coming in, think of it bathing the whole body. As it goes out, it bathes the whole body. It doesn't squeeze anything. It doesn't force anything. It allows your sense of the body to stay right here in fullness. So learn how to fine-tune your awareness to that fullness of the breath. 
because it gives a sense of ease in the body and a sense of fullness, a sense of well-being in the mind as well. And the stillness in and of itself creates that sense of fullness. As I said, once you're still, you don't have to go do anything else to create this sense of well-being. Just maintain the stillness. Allow the mind to stay there. Allow your focus to stay there. And the nature of the mind, the nature of the breath, will take care of everything else. Your only duty is to tend to this mind to make sure that it doesn't go wandering off, that it doesn't go squeezing out its awareness of the body so it can focus on other things. That's the normal way we tend to think about things. If we're awareness is filling the body, you can't think about past or future without squeezing off your awareness of at least some part of the body in order to make room for those thoughts. Which means that different parts of the energy in the body energy in the body are getting squeezed off all throughout the course of the day. And no wonder there's a sense of a sense of lack, a sense of hunger. So as you're meditating, you're allowing things to get fed again, to heal. And like many medicines, it takes time for this medicine to do its work. So be patient with it. All too many people come to meditate, and after the first five or ten minutes they say, I can't meditate, I'm not getting any peace. Well, it takes time. It takes dedication. It takes persistence. And as they often say in Thailand, it's amazing how people can sit through hours and hours of movies and hours and hours of plays and not complain about sitting still. And yet we're sitting and meditating, and after five minutes people start to complain. So a lot of this has to do with our attitude towards the time spent meditating. If you have confidence in what you're doing, then it's a lot easier to sit through the whole hour. So try to develop that sense of confidence after all. The Buddha, what kind of person was the Buddha? He was a very truthful person, lots of integrity. And he was a very independent-minded person. He didn't do things just because other people told him they were right. He had to test them for himself. This is the kind of person who founded this path. And the people for the past 2,600 years have been finding good results from this path as well. So when they say that it takes time, maybe it's not just because they're old-fashioned people, maybe it's because this process really does take time. Unfortunately, our society doesn't encourage people to stick with things for a long time, to wait for results that require time. Everything in a society has to come fast, has to come right away. Even in our education system, they don't teach people how to do things well that don't come immediately, don't come easy immediately. They check you and say, well, you seem to have a talent in this direction, and they push you in that direction. They don't give you training in how to learn how to develop skill in areas that don't come quickly, don't come easily. This is an important lesson that we all have to learn if we want to live well-rounded lives. How to stick with something that's not easy to begin with, but how to use your powers of observation to check what you're doing, to check the results, and think about how you might do them better. How to get advice from people who already are good at whatever it is you're, you're focusing on. And how to stick with things that don't come immediately. But you find with this stick to itiveness makes a lot of the difference. In fact, in concentration practice, that's what it is. It's all stick to itiveness. We're starting out with something that's not much, just the breath coming in, going out, which is about as ordinary as you can get. But the Buddha discovered that if you stay with it, it makes a big difference in the mind, a big difference in the body. It's the staying that makes the difference. It allows the mind to develop a solidity, a sense of being grounded, so it's not flitting around. So see what it's like to, to be grounded in the breath. Try to push the envelope of your attention span so it's longer and longer. 
and see how that rearranges the power balance in the mind. So that's your understanding of how true happiness requires stillness, how true happiness requires peace. How that understanding can become more dominant in the mind. And the part of the mind that keeps looking for happiness outside, that keeps wanting to run out into the road, that gets less and less power, gets less and less support. So as what we're sitting here and doing is not much, it's focusing on the breath coming in going out. But if you can stick with it, it turns into an awful lot. But you won't know what that awful lot is unless you stick with it, stick with it yourself. 